The Film Crickets are intended for mature audiences. Any guests on The Film Crickets do not necessarily share the same opinions as The Film Crickets. Film Crickets, chirping about movies. It's time for The Film Crickets with Jay Fortier, Chris Martineau, and Melanie Howerton. On this week's episode, the Crickets are joined by graphic novelist and podcast host of the What About Podcast, Jason Burns returns to the show, and Jay, Chris, Melanie, and Jason review the 1996 American science fiction action film, Independence Day. Wow. <laughs> ah, this, what a pleasure. <laughs> As you can imagine, they, they don't let us out much. Guess you'd like to see the big tamale, huh? Follow me. Does it stand the test of time? Let's find out your film crickets are on now. All right, welcome everybody to the film crickets. My name is Jay Fortier. I'm along with my good friend and co-host, Chris Martineau. Hello. You, man? Good afternoon. What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also along with my good friend and co-host, Melanie Harton. How you doing, Melanie? Good. Thanks for uh, having me back. <laughs> Guess who's back? Yeah. Well, you know. Back again. <laughs> Mel is back. She's been gone long enough. She's out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Well, listen, um, we're honored once again to have Jason Burns. Uh, welcome, man. We this is this is great. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Uh, out of Independence Day context, that hot tamale quote might have might have hit differently if it was uh, coming from, you know, just out of nowhere. So mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Uh, uh, people have exclusive rights to seeing the hot tamale. Uh, typically, mm-hmm. yes. Um, Sue, Mr. Burns. Yes. Um, all right. Excellent. Well, it's, it's good to have everybody here. I'm, I'm glad to be talking about Independence Day. Um, uh, before we we kind of get into the the movie proper, uh, let's talk about history uh, mm-hmm. with with our experiences with Independence Day. So I'll start with Jason, uh, if you don't mind. Um, Absolutely. What's your history with the movie? Did you see it in theaters? Is it in high rotation? Like, what's your kind of relationship with Independence Day? So uh, I have and always uh, will be big on uh, UFOs. Thanks, probably large largely in part to uh, X Files. I was a big yep. X Files fan. So I was excited for this movie. I was on vacation with my friend's family in uh, the White Mountains. And right. so it came out in 96. I was uh, a junior going into my senior year. And we went and saw it at a very tiny movie theater in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. That was dated back then and is probably even more dated now. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a line. And I just remembered how exciting and energetic everybody was waiting to get into this movie on a big holiday weekend in a in a place where there were lots of uh, travelers, and uh, it was kind of like a party. It was a cool vibe. Um, I'm gonna do a follow up. <coughs> when you were in that area of New Hampshire, you were aware of the Betty and Barney Hill story. Sure, yeah, one of the yeah. biggest. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to the monument? Uh, I've never been to the monument. I, I was uh, driving around aimlessly in that area. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those, you know, it's like a historical, it's not a monument. It's a historical marker. It's a green sign. Okay. Like typically, they have that for like Revolutionary War battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. War battles. And I was driving around with my my wife and, and I just, and we're big UFO fans too. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of hooey, but I love the stories, right? Just like mm-hmm. ghosts. I don't think ghosts are a thing. But, but I love it's the fun. Story. I love the story. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Yeah. So I'm driving around, I'm like, like, wait a minute. And I just driving by at full speed. I think that was the, and we turned around and right on Route 3. There's a thing that says, this is where it hmm. happened. And I'm like, what the hell? And for so, reference for your listeners, that's like basically where the idea of abductions came from. Yep. Yep. So the yeah. whole the whole thing kind of from that. From that. Yeah. Excellent. Do you watch it a lot? Do you watch this movie a lot? You know, I, I at the time, I also worked at a video store back in the day. So I remember how ex- exciting, excited everybody was to come in and buy it, rent it, all that mm-hmm. good stuff. Because yep. this was one of those movies, if I remember correctly, that... Back in the day where VHS and DVDs cost $99 if you didn't return it. This yeah. was one of those ones that was like 1999. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I watched it endlessly on rotation in the video store. And I don't think because of that reason I ever watched it again. Because sure. I just sure. watched it so much. Yeah, yeah. It's good, but like it's having, you know, cheesecake is great. Yeah. Only yeah. cheesecake is bad. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm into that. All right. Uh, Jason, uh, Jay, you're, you're next up on yeah, no, left to right. What's your deal? Uh, I know. <laughs> We're going to have to get used to that. Um, um, Yeah, I saw it also opening night um, years ago. Um, I was very, very excited. It was one of those those things, though. I saw the um, 
I saw the Super Bowl trailer and I was like, what the hell is this? Like, I, it, like it didn't appeal to me on the Super Bowl. Like, because it was like, enjoy the Super Bowl. It might be your last. Like, you know, I was like, whoa, 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 that. Right? And it's just like one of those things I was like, that looks dumb. You know, and then um, I got to see a nice, like, long preview. Um, you know, this is like 96. I'm seeing every other movie if I, as long as I can. You know, like, because it's just like my favorite thing to do. And, you know, we went out and saw Twister. Earlier that year, because that was the same year. Same year? Holy right. shit. Yeah. yeah. Disaster movies um, are plenty. All right. Yeah. And then, because I remember the, um, I saw it in a local, like, uh, theater in my town. And it was also, like, you know, it wasn't, like, a big Megaplex, like, type theater. It was the old style. And, but, like, they had just come out with, like, a different type of sound on CD instead. Mm -hmm. Like, it was going to be, like, louder and clearer and everything like that. And the guy came to the front to the the manager goes hey everybody welcome to the uh, first uh, showing of independence day and we're like yeah and he goes he says they um well okay did anybody see twister yeah and he goes all right so we have a new like thing it's on cd since it's no longer like the old way so um it might be really loud but the problem is we you're gonna maybe like ask us to turn it down and we can't. Everybody goes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't turn it down. <laughs> we all excited. Um, it was like like just like you know you couldn't have uh, like said anything better to us. Um, <clears throat> and I had the poster. Um, I, I you know like I bought the movie like as soon as it was able like and I've watched it pretty much. I would watch it like once a year, maybe like around this time, you know, like around. That's like what I was going to ask. Do you think people, this is like a tradition, like a Sometimes. Christmas movie is like that? Yeah. yeah. In, a, in a way, well, because it, like it gives, that, around this it time gives off the year. vibe. Mm -hmm. And just to, you know, to show you how much I do love this movie, I have a, um, a special. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, oh, that's cool. Audio, uh, like, see, it's like a double, uh, two discs. It's like a one of 5,000. It's got like a nice book inside, and, you know, so. So if you could go back and talk to Jay, who was watching the Super Bowl, what mm -hmm. would you tell him then? <laughs> Dude, you're going to love this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, awesome. I, I instantly fell in love. So wow. go ahead, Melanie. Yeah, uh, Melanie, hit I it. Have, I, I don't have as long of a story as those guys, but um, I, I don't remember the last time. I mean, I don't remember the first time I ever watched it. I just remember loving it, and I always have. And so whenever it's on TV... Um, I just kind of just put it on and watch it. And mm -hmm. it's funny, I watched it not that long ago. And then um, I watched it when um, when we were supposed to do this the first time. So I've seen it probably like twice, um, what, like since, la like a little bit since what we're going to do this like last 4th of July area. Mm -hmm. And yep. then About a year. not too a year long ago. ago. Yep. I didn't watch it again for the movie, though, because I've just, I mean, for this uh, podcast, because I've just seen it so many times, like, I think mm -hmm. I'll be totally fine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, super. Yeah. Um, I, I saw it uh, in the theater. I remember being like, it was like a movie you'd never seen before because then we're going to talk about it. It just kind of gets going and it never stops. Mm -hmm. um, even though it has its defined three acts, like this act one, act two, act three is very obvious. Um, you're kind of in it in the whole, the whole way. And I just remember being blown away by how quick it was. Uh, this was a new style of filmmaking. Um, not new, but we hadn't seen anything like this in quite some time, right? So it kind of redefined the summer blockbuster. I think Jaws redefined the summer blockbuster, and then Star Wars kind of took the mantle, and then and then suddenly here's Independence Day, and it's Will Smith July Fourth every time um, that comes up. So I remember seeing it, I remember owning it, I remember on VHS, and then that went away. And my this is one of my wife's top ten, uh, along with Men in Black. It, it just every time it's on, you just put it on, you leave it on in the background. It's Melanie's Halloween for my wife. <laughs> Uh, that and Men in Black, and I said to her the other because we've been on, we went on a hell of a road trip. Um, we've been away since from the twentieth to the twenty eighth, and we had this this podcast the thirtieth, and we finally got to sit down on the 29th and we were just vegetables, like we were just <laughs> exhausted, like just doing everything, just constantly going and going. And vacation is great, but eventually it's like, oh god. Anyway, so the bottom yeah. line is that I say, hey, look, I know we're just chilling, we're just gonna sit on the couch, like. I got to do Independence Day on Sunday. Like, we don't have to watch it. She's like, oh, no. We're watching it. Um, she didn't care. <laughs> Two and a half hours. And um, she's like, man, I love that movie. 
And it is a really good movie. It's so well yeah. done. It's mm-hmm. well told. It's well put together. Um, didn't say it, it holds up, uh, but it's just, I mean, I, it's hard to say it's not a good movie. I mean, yeah. that's hard to say. I mean, it's so good. Fun. Um, so, all right, so let's get into um, let's get into this proper. Let's do the IMDb breakdown, mm-hmm. and we've got um, Independence Day uh, came out in 1996, PG-13. Why? Not sure. Running time of two hours and 25 minutes, which is kind of long. And the synopsis is: the aliens are coming. What a mess. Sorry, the aliens are. Com- <laughs> Sorry. All right. Oh. Uh, the aliens are coming, and their goal is to invade and destroy Earth. Fighting superior technology, mankind's best weapon is the will to survive. Directed by Roland Emmerich. Writers are Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich. Starring Will Smith, Bill Pullman, Jeff Goldblum, Mary McDonald, Judd Hirsch, Robert Loggia, Randy Quaid, Ma- Margaret Collin, uh, James Redburn, Harvey F- Ivy Fiasin, Adam Baldwin, which cracks me up because he was animal mother in... In, in, uh, in, um, 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 Full Metal Jack. Uh, thank you. Sorry, Drew <laughs> Blank. Um, uh, Brent Spiner, Vivica A. Fox, and so on and so forth. Jay, remind me if I missed anybody. Harry Connick uh, Jr. Harry Connick yes. Jr., who oh is God, useless. Yeah. Useless. <laughs> oh, he pisses Thanks. me off in this movie. Um, yeah. Well, you know, um, Melanie, do you have anything on him? I don't know. Okay. I, um, what I got I a little something. That, oh, yeah. It was, go ahead. Sorry. I was told that that was originally written for Matthew Perry. It was. And oh. his dad is in the movie. Not his stepdad, who is the Dateline announcer, but his actual dad plays one of the FBI agents in the movie. Matthew oh, wow. Perry's yeah, Matthew actual Perry dad? Did. Yep. Wow. Yep. All right. That makes a little nice. more sense. But, God, he bugs me. And uh, Sorry. Let's not talk about the things that are bad. Let's talk about the things that are good. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I do have one other thing after. Go ahead. What? Um, Oh, it's just um, David Arnold, the guy who composed the uh, score, um, was watching the movie, like, you know, like, as, and going along. You know, when um, Harry Connick Jr. goes, he goes, you got your victory cigar? And he goes, I got it right here. Yeah. David Arnold actually, like, adjusted the music to match his, uh, hmm. his voice. Really? Oh, I don't have that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because it, it actually sounded better. <laughs> That's <laughs> I love it. Oh God! Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, so let's talk about that since you brought up the soundtrack, which is like perfect. There's so many it. themes that kind of match the action that's going on. This mm-hmm. movie starts with the aliens coming in over. We see the American flag on the moon, and we see the base. And we have this very patriotic mu- music, and then suddenly it goes from a major key patriotic to this weird minor key. And from that point, on this viewing, I noticed that this movie sets you up emotionally from the start to slowly kind of make the audience realize how much trouble we're in, but not all at once. Mm -hmm. It's looming. Mm -hmm. We don't, it's like, it's like a horror movie. We don't see the bad guy for a long time. Which well, goes we, back to your Jaws reference too, because you really yep. don't see Jaws at all that all that much until the end as well. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. so here it comes like we see a shadow. And then we see a radar blip. And then we see it gets like more and more. And then like, okay, well, if the aliens are coming and there's a lot of them, but you know, maybe they're coming in, in good intentions. We don't know yet. We as the audience don't know what's going on. And we are we are the panic that ensues from the first act of this movie, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I want to know how you guys feel about this. The panic that ensues, we are being drawn along with the panic. The mm-hmm. slow realization of, oh, we're kind of screwed. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, we're very screwed. Oh, mm-hmm. no, we're totally screwed. I'm like, oh, no, we're fucked. And then, and then that's when all hell breaks loose all at once. And I want to get your feelings on how you felt about it, even if you didn't do a rewatch, you did, about this opening section of the movie in terms of drawing us along as an audience. It, this movie doesn't waste any time. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It just goes into it, and we're along for the ride. Feelings on that? Anybody? Yeah, I mean, I think that's exactly what my feeling was, is that we were supposed to be one of uh, the citizens of this world, being mm-hmm. able to feel that this was possible and that... In our own little circle of life, we're 
uh, optimistic, uh, not so optimistic. We're probably doomed. Oh, yeah, mm. we're definitely doomed. I think it t- sort of yeah. takes you on that ride of of you're losing hope uh, along with the, the characters in the film itself. Right. Even though we know from the trailers that the aliens are bad. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, it, yeah. I think um, it was such a media, like, it, it was such a monster as far as the way, uh, like, nobody, almost nobody walked into this theater knowing, like, you know, they've seen the image of the Empire State yeah. Building. Yeah, this wasn't E.T. Yeah, this was an yeah. E.T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, you, we couldn't, um, they couldn't hide it from us. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. It, it was just, and this was pre-internet, really. I know, like, you know, what, I'm, what I mean is it wasn't like everything is a spoiler. Mm-hmm. But the TV was making it a spoiler. Like, yeah. every, every, uh, so, like, the only person maybe that would fully feel that way is someone who didn't watch a lot of TV and got dragged to the theater to watch this. Movie. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> or something that I wanted to propose to everybody here as well. We all shared our stories with it, but I also feel like this is a very American film. Like yes. it feels very oh, America. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and yeah. I wonder if people from other parts, like I don't think this movie would be made today because studios are so worried about overseas uh, money getting yeah. getting getting the uh, recouping their budgets overseas and then mm-hmm. making some gross there, but uh, but to me this felt like it was made for an American audience. Yep. Um, well, I have a little weird tidbit on that. Mm, um, hit it. Uh, apparently, it was uh, popular um, and uh, for for uh, I guess Spanish television, and they were doing advertisements for the movie. I don't know if you guys know anything about this, but. Nope. Um, so they were showing like the large ships hovering over New York City, um, and it was mistaken by some Spaniards for real disaster news footage. Oh. Um, so they were comparing it to the Orson Welles War, the War, hmm. uh, World's Radio, yep. um, that sparked that huge alien uh, pandemic. So that's actually kind of what a lot of people were thinking. The special effects people were like, "Yes, we did <laughs> yes. it." We did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you not sell this movie on blowing up those things? Because that had not yeah. been seen. Well, in the 70s, we had a spate of disaster movies, but it was always Towering Inferno or Airport or like small things. It wasn't Mm -hmm. the White House. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the Empire State Building. And to me, it's and I'm going to draw other 9-11 analogies to this, but this is in a time where we as Americans in 97, we're in an age of prosperity. Things are okay. We don't worry too much about terrorist attacks. We're not paranoid about overseas. We're just kind of living our whatever problems there are in America and there were many um, we're not worried about all the stuff we are worried about now this is another age mm-hmm. and to see the White House blown up mm. and the Capitol blown up um, to me I think was a complete shock to the audience now it's just like hey they blew up the White right. House right like, it became like how do we one up Independence Day after Independence Day right. what can we the, blow up so that is ballsy by them, and, and I mm-hmm. think that stirred up a lot. That's why, like, to your point, it's an American movie, right? Mm-hmm. And we're blowing up all these icons that no one dared touch before. Mm-hmm. How dare you blow up the White House? How dare you blow up the Capitol? And in me fact, in, you, go ahead. You mentioned the VHS. If I remember correctly, the cover was like a hologram, and if you moved it up and down, it would blow up the White House. <laughs> yep, uh-huh. yep. So this for yeah, entertainment right. purposes, blowing up the White House mm-hmm. for ent- entertainment purposes. And me, I live outside of D.C. I'm in D.C. all the time. I'm such a D.C. nerd. I'm like, oh, my God. I knew where they shot this. You know what, yeah. you know what I do love, though? Uh, um, Melanie, if I, if I take this, I You're good. It's okay if you do all um, this. Cross it out. <laughs> um, the, they basically were looking at it because uh, they really wanted the, uh, the flames to come down the street. Mm-hmm. But flames don't actually behave that way. No. Mm-hmm. They go up. They, nope. don't, they don't roll. Nope. They don't. <laughs> but... but you know, he went, it was a cool thing that they wanted, and it would have cost so much money in, like, computer generation that they decided to basically flip the, like, street, uh, like, on its side. Like, so mm-hmm. they basically built a whole model, and they blew up the, the, the flame going up, and hmm. the, the, the camera was, like, basically aiming down as it was coming up. So, therefore, like, you could see the ball just rolling down the hmm. street. It was yeah. just kind of neat. It's, it's um, and, just and, yeah. Uh, it's just like, I don't know. Like I like their their efforts in this. Like I th- even I th- though I think know, they, they did the same thing with the Death Star. 
if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but um, again, analogous to you know pre 9 11, we all saw the footage of when the when the towers fell and the debris coming down the street, and yeah. we see that here in the same thing. We see the fireball coming down mm-hmm. the street of New York or LA mm-hmm. or wherever it is. Can we just talk about again? We're talking about setting up the story here in Act One, which is destroying everything. The aliens coming down and destroying everything. The, the 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 attention to detail on such a stupid movie, and I mean stupid in the best possible way. This is silly nonsense. It's just mm-hmm. a, it's if it were it looked cheaper, it would be a B movie. It's hundred percent. Yeah, that's uh, a great absolutely. Yeah. It's silly. It's silly as fuck. But the bottom line is that the attention to detail in this movie is hysterical. We have the president of the United States, which I love Bill Pullman in this movie because he acts like a just. He's almost like. He shouldn't. He got lucky to be in the job. He was just charismatic enough to get elected, and he acts like a normal dude. Like we don't even know he's the president when they introduce him. He's just yeah. in a room, and then suddenly, oh, he's the president. He's acting like a normal dude um, because he's more like a people's president, I guess, mm-hmm. which kind of sets up the speech at the end. But when he is having breakfast, or when he is getting briefed in the White House, and when he's in the Oval Office, suddenly there's, there's three people talking to him, and then five people, and then 12 people, and then the, the office is consumed with people advising the president what to do. At that time, Vivica A. Fox, which is in California, is just waking up. They don't go and specifically like hit you over the head like, hey, it's three hours difference. They, they are subtly telling you that this is all happening to people at the same time, but at different times. And if it were a dumber movie, they wouldn't even bother. Mm-hmm. And to me, that is the they're trying to instill the realism of them of a completely like in bullshit movie. I mean, it's just nonsense, (laughs) but they're trying to instill as much realism as possible in subtle ways rather than in big ways. So it draws you in as the audience. Oh, yeah, of course, Vivica A. Fox and Will Smith are just waking up. And of course, the president is already dressed and had breakfast because it's three hours difference. (laughs) And it's just dynamite. That to me is not lazy. For a movie that could be so silly and stupid, it's not lazy writing. They're taking their time to deal with all this stuff. Well, and that might go back to what we talked about already, which is that it makes you feel like you're being a part of this moment in time mm-hmm. because they're using real time to 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 suck the audience in. Right. And, and the fact that we don't know the motivations of the aliens. Mm-hmm. as far We don't know what their deal is until we know their deal. And then we know their deal, and it's bad news. Mm-hmm. And we still, it's still their motivations are dumb. Oh my god! I hope they bring back Elvis. Yeah, exactly. Like that's all they're, <laughs> they're worried about, and whatnot. So, um, to me, it's it's we don't ever. Why are the aliens there? Why are the aliens want us? They were they were like uh, like so many other movies. They like were signs. they were <laughs> taking yeah they were taking resources. Yeah. They they okay. are. They were nomadic species that went from planet to planet. Right. And they mess with the wrong one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they mess with the wrong one, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, get I, I around do have the to world. say. Tell them to bring those sons of bitches down. <laughs> <laughs> like, everything in it was so good. There's why, well, just going back to when you said when Will Smith wakes up, I just thought that part was so cute. And his little kid's out in the street, and you can see, like, Every, he's looking outside and he's like, oh, the neighbors are moving again or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and then just, you know, he goes outside and his little kid is just like, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm shooting the aliens. Like, oh, you're shooting the aliens. And then, you know, he decides to finally look up. I love that part. That whole beginning mm-hmm. part right there I thought was so cute. It's because- funny because those, those like moments, it, it's in this movie, it's in Signs, it's in mm-hmm. um, the uh, Mars Attacks. Uh, the uh, remake with Tom Cruise of uh, of uh, War, of the World. World. War of the Worlds. There was a time period where these, like, before everything goes bad, they show you everybody sort of in that panic mode. And nowadays, that's the zombie movie. They mm-hmm. just replace the aliens with the zombie, but those beginnings are all very similar. And for yep. me, those are always the most exciting parts of of these sort of apocalyptic movies because you get to see when everything's going to shit. Yeah. Shaun of the Dead does that very well. Mm-hmm. Like they show the same scene twice, once before the shit goes down and after mm-hmm. the shit goes down, it's the same scene. And just to I show you Shaun. how everything's falling apart. Yep. But I would like to mention that in this opening act where everything's kind of going to hell, 
and my wife pointed it out and never really thought about it, is that it's showing all, in all the scenes from the East Coast to the West Coast to other countries, it's showing how it's affecting everyone. So here we are in the rich end of Washington, D.C., with all the people that in their coats and their in their in their suits and driving their awesome cars and whatnot to the homeless in New York, to the strippers in L.A., to the military guys. And it's all affecting different aspects of life which gets to realize that if this came down, it's all a problem. It's a problem for everybody. It doesn't matter what your social class. Finally, I think Reagan said it back in the day, like the only thing that would uni unite humanity would be an attack from another world. Because then we'd realize, oh, wait, we do have to come together. Well, to going back to 9-11, that's what united the country, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's yep. uh, an yep. attack that united you know, our country, which is mm -hmm. basically what this movie was about as well. Just mm -hmm. the U.S. for the most part. Yep. yep. Yeah. And, and it, it got people for a moment to kind of put away their differences. I'm not. Mm -hmm. it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. At the end of the movie, going to third act, I believe. And I don't, I don't mean to be a hot topic here, but I believe when we're launching the counterattack, the successful counterattack against the aliens, we figured out how to. Give them a virus. Mm -hmm. um, nonsense. But um, <laughs> fucking nonsense. Hey, they tapped that... into our satellites. They used computers to get in there. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Um, but I believe at one point there is an Israeli jet. And then there's, they're talking yeah, there's a... to a Palestinian mm -hmm. jet. I think it's a Palestine or Palestine Palestinian-ish flag. And then there's an Israeli thing. Now, obviously, I'm not trying to be controversial. It wasn't as bad in 95 as it is currently now, and I'm not, I don't want to talk about that. But the fact of the matter is that is the point of the movie, is that if this were come to pass, everybody would have to get their shit together. Right, right. At least for a few minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what like, I mean? You know, what, look, you know how you, you were saying it was a, like a very pro-American movie? Yeah. I like how the guy is like, the Americans... They want to launch a counteroffensive. It's about bloody time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've been waiting for them. <laughs> I'm just like, like so So wait, they've been just sitting around twiddling their thumbs waiting for yeah. America? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon. We're just waiting. Yeah, like, I swear to God, they're going to they're gonna contact us really soon. Yeah. I wonder if that was that's what yeah. England was doing in World War II, waiting for America to get yeah. involved. So maybe that's a little, little throwback there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I just, every time I watch it, I'm like, wait, what? No, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but in terms of like this movie as a whole, what I felt, and you talked about this, Chris, is that it sort of changed cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, this, to me, then became the summer of like movies felt like a a amusement park ride after this. Like yeah. they felt this was one of those movies that I saw live in the theater where the, the whole audience cheered when the aliens were defeated, which is a very unusual thing, especially nowadays. It's hard to get everybody on the same page about a, mm -hmm. a movie or, but the, but the excitement was, was there because like you said, it felt like you were kind of in it. You're living it. It's mm -hmm. the excitement never stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's just, um, it is is a good indicator of well let's look at it this way it's also kind of the beginning of and jaws started it and then it tapered off and this movie kind of brought it back and then men in black and then wild wild well jurassic West. park too jurassic because, park um, yep jurassic if uh jeff goldblum actually says must go fast that's right yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. Fast. that's the best must go fast. that's the best yeah. it's also from jurassic park i've got that in there too and it said something else too that he I guess he like he was had motion sickness as well, and he had motion sickness when he was in the fly. So, just kind of some some of the things that he that he did was in both movies, you know. So That's awesome. Oh yeah. wait a minute. So wait, does he actually have motion sickness? Or no, I guess has... like he has motion sickness in this movie, and he also had motion sickness in the fly. And then in this movie, he said the must go oh. faster, and he said must go faster in Jurassic Park. So. I wonder um, how much do we all know that Jeff Goldblum is a is a certified weirdo? Oh yeah, <laughs> like he's he like he's a jazz pianist, and I believe his his personality is that of an improviser. He just says whatever, whenever, just to I see what does, if we yeah. can make it up. I wonder how much of that that stuff is is improvised. Yeah, yeah. W w there's one thing he does with a hand motion where he does like so. Hmm? Hmm. He, I think he does that's this just thing. him in general. <laughs> yeah, but he does it in the fly too. He's like, I got yeah. one word for you, cheeseburger. 
And that's all yeah. I could think of yeah. uh, when I'm watching it. Um, man, has anyone has anyone watched like anything that's raw Jeff Goldblum? I he think was just, just kind of has the same kind of sorry, like he just acts the same. How like Alec Baldwin acts kind of a lot of the same in a lot of the yeah. movies that he's in. Do you know what I mean? I think that's just his personality in general. Yeah, he was just on uh, Conan O'Brien's podcast recently, and the entire episode was just like out in left field. They couldn't yeah. corral him. He was just all over the place. Yeah, really. That, yeah, he's. It, it's amazing because when you see him in stuff like, well, the unfortunate Independence Day resurgence, and oh. he comes back for that. And I know at that point, I didn't know how much of a friggin' weirdo this guy was, not like in general. That. And I, he no, must re, he must <laughs> reel it in so much when he has to do a movie like Independence Day or Jurassic Park or The Fly. Yeah, the second Jurassic Park, he was so like, it was so like uptight of a character that it didn't yeah. feel like him anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. how much, if anything, that's being an actor because mm -hmm. he himself is out of control. <laughs> like he's absolutely watch. What watch the, the one of the first things on Disney Plus is the Jeff Goldblum series. When they launched Disney it. Plus, they didn't have a lot of content, mm -hmm. and they had a thing where Jeff Goldblum just like does investigates things, and it's weird. Look it up. I forget what it's called. It's this Jeff Goldblum series. He talks about bicycles and fucking ghost hunting. It's weird. That's Look it funny. up. Watch it. It's Jeff Goldblum. It's it's, it's it boiled <laughs> down Jeff Goldblum. It's the world no. according to Jeff Goldblum. There it is. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Which sums up his personality too. At the time. Oh my That's, god. I'll have to write that down. Is it stupid? <laughs> no, it's not stupid. It's just Changer. like Changer. weirdly <laughs> entertaining. Changer like imagine world. his character from <clears throat> Thor Ragnarok just all the time. Hmm. Just, my mom loved him, so we should watch that together. Oh, he's cool. No, it's yeah. like I said, they're half hour episodes. You don't like it? It's a half hour audio life. Yeah. Um, there were two seasons of it, maybe about 10 episodes. It was Disney Plus must have been really hurting for content because they went to him like <laughs> I remember that was the first thing I watched on Disney Plus. Anyway, uh, back to the movie. Back to the movie. So. Um, so so in the, the second act, though, is like I, I've seen the movie like plenty of times. Mm -hmm. um, I've started it more than I've ever like, you know, like did you ever do that where you start a movie yes. like, yeah, yeah, all right, not yeah. today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a true test of how much I'm really in the mood to see it is if I can make it past the second act. Because I think I find the second act to be a lot like you. They give you so much mm -hmm. in the first yep. that after all the destruction, there's kind of like a like a letdown. Mm -hmm. Like where it's like, OK, it like does the, slow the down. Pacing changes. It, that yeah. is interesting yeah. because they do put a lot of the, the all that destruction feels like it would be third act stuff. But it's mm -hmm. not. It's all first act. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and then like second act is kind of like, okay, like in in a sense of pacing and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So I have to watch them, you know, like trying to like you know just drive around. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, oh, we found the first lady. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, and I'm not saying I'm not trying to knock it down. I'm just saying that like that is a, a lower point as far as excitement. They fed you so much. They they really threw everything at you that. It's like once, once you know, it gets to a certain level. Did anybody ever see the special edition, like the extended edition? No, nope. Um, there's a there's an interesting aspect to it. They, um, you know, the little kid that that's Russell's uh, uh, son. Mm -hmm. Like he's the one that goes, "Pull over, man! I gotta throw up." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, um, so and you know, he he gets sick, and they they get out and. Uh, Russell and his uh, older son uh, were like having an argument. He's like, who needs to go get him, him medicine all the time? You know, and, and the kid takes his bottle and like throws it. Like, and, and it's just like they added this whole section of like this whole extra thing on explaining why this kid is sick. Hmm. So it's just kind of interesting. It wasn't just like him having motion sickness. Like, they added like a, a whole thing where you, you cared a little more about. It's not that great. I'm just saying, like, yeah. it's just a little extra stuff that yeah. they give you a little more depth. Mm -hmm. Sure. Than, um, uh, than when they get to Area 51, which they allow they allow him in because he needs help. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then there's a hot tamale. <laughs> and, then, right? yeah. Yeah. and then there's a hot tamale. I, I always thought it was funny when the president was like, there is no Area 51. If, if there was, I would know about it. And then they're like, actually, president. <laughs> like, yep. He's like, oh, you know, oh, okay. Um, I will want to say, I do want to say though, as you were saying that it does slow down, which it does. I think, um, 
when it starts to wake you up again is Bill Pullman's speech. You know, today we take sure. back oh, our independence. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And then you're like, wow, that's so good. I mean, I, almost like, I think that was where the actually, that. yeah, I think that's where the crowd clapped when I saw it. it was at that moment, actually. So uh, good. I, I'd yeah. like to say when I, I saw that speech, and I never thought about it, um, is that when he, at this point, we've realized that we, that the aliens do have a weak point, even though it's total fucking nonsense. I mean, putting a virus of another species into another computer. What the fuck? Like, that's crazy. I mean, that's that's right. nuts. Now, wait a minute. Sure. I, I want to go to Melanie's point and it Jason's point. Fun, Hold on. Right? It's a computer Hold. thing. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. But my point is, this movie has us in so hard. And I agree. They have us... I have bought into all of the relationships between the people. Mm-hmm. I have bought into the crisis, even though it's nonsense. I have bought into everything in this movie. Such that when Bill Pullman does that speech, you know we're going to win. It's not like this movie's going to be a letdown and we're going to lose. You know we're going to win. So the fact that all of the stakes after that point seem realistic, like we could lose. And yet we know we're not going to because Bill just gave that speech with the music and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know we're going to make it out of this, but you still want to watch if the movie were done poorly, you'd go, well, we're going to win. Mm-hmm. What's Who cares? Mm-hmm. But it's able to give you those moments of tension, those moments of sacrifice, the the, the um, 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 case. Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid yeah. having to make the tough decision. And, um, you know, um, uh, Will Smith and, and, uh, and Jeff, Jeff Goldblum Feldman. inside the alien ship, understanding that we're not going to make it out of this. Like... That's all great, but we know we're going to win, but yet we're we're invested. We know how the movie's going to end. We're invested. Just like when the spaceship, we, we finally figure out, we're finally blowing up the spaceships. We've won the day, but we still care about Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum getting out of the mothership yeah. in time. And we know the doors are closing, and they're going to like, they're gonna make it out. It's very Star Wars, actually. Now that you're, you're explaining yeah. it this way, it's very it Star Wars. Like, it, like they're gonna Wars. make it out. They're not not gonna make it out. But you're still like, oh shit, it's getting real close. Mm-hmm. And you're yeah. hanging on to it, which goes to show that they did the movie right. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. if it were obvious, then they're like, oh, they're gonna make it out. Whatever. You know what I mean? So you know it, but you're still in. And every time you watch, you go, oh man, that's fucking close. I know. Isn't it Those crazy? Those doors are close. That, that is they, so crazy. Even though you've seen a movie like 20,000 times, you're still like, it's all like stressful when you're watching it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you already know like, it's going to end, but you're still stressed out. Enough mm-hmm. about the fat lady. I, I love yeah. the fact yeah, you're that... You're obsessed with the fat lady. You're obsessed with the fat lady. <laughs> I love the movie that, first of all, the whole concept of the of their weak point is nonsense. Now, up to this point, so we uploaded, quote unquote, uploaded a virus into an alien computer from an, a, a human computer. Bullshit. Okay, fine. Whatever. I can't worry about that right now. Okay? Up to that point, my whole... Whenever I watch this movie, I go, that's horse shit. But whatever. I don't care. Do you care that it's bullshit, guys? Did you care? No, I don't don't feel like it sounds bullshitty. (laughs) No, it was totally bullshit. Here's why I didn't care it was bullshit. And you kind of pointed it out earlier, Chris, which is that if this had... $50 Fifty million dollars less of a budget, it would be yeah. a B movie, and yeah. I love B movies too. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like a B movie with effort. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> what good effort? Good effort. Yeah. Um, so, so at first, and, and I want to—I just want to illustrate the smartness of this movie. When I first watched this movie, I'm like, this ending is horseshit. They—they're uploading a virus to an alien spacecraft inside of a mothership. To get into their computer, right? And I always thought it was being like satellited in, like a signal. Just I'm like, it'd them. never get into the thing. But the movie is so smart, but it's so dumb, but it's so smart in that they have a scene where when Jeff Goldblum says, I gave it a virus, I gave it a cold, I gave it a virus. And we see Jeff Goldblum like attaching cables to the alien ship that's been in Area 51. So. They've been able to connect to the space to the alien spacecraft and figure out what's going on with it. So there is a conduit which which they can by a cable upload and download information into this one chip. The big guess is when we upload us and he says it, 
when we get into the alien ship, we're going to dock. And then when we dock, they'll connect a cable like they would to any other ship. And to me, that's genius because it's subtle. It doesn't go and explain it in five minutes. It just We just have this moment of, oh, we're, the big gimmick is Jeff Goldblum is hoping that when they dock, someone mm-hmm. will attach something like any other docking maneuver, and then we'll be able to exchange information that and way. And as the audience, you know that these two are now going to be put in serious danger. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But but I it, but so that's I always thought that bit was kind of horseshit. Now it's horseshit to upload a virus into an alien computer. That's nonsense. Okay, but, but wait, that, I just thought of something when you said that. What? Didn't they say at one point that like they're using their own technology against them somehow? That like they're like weren't they tapping into their computers somehow in some way? I so agree with you, Melanie. But he's it? still launching an, a virus from an Apple laptop. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm just thinking that like. The, it, it, I know it, it's not, you know, uh, you know, you can't do it, but I'm just saying, but when they set, I think they were trying to set you up for that, though. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, this is why it's possible. Sure. You know what I mean? It, and, and, and I'll give them the credit is that at that point, they don't need to over explain it. Mm-hmm. Just like they don't need to over explain why the aliens are doing what they're doing. They give us an explanation, but it's not in detail. And mm-hmm. you know what? We don't care. Yeah. The you movie's so good. We don't care. Like, okay, whatever. I'm in. Other movies that aren't executed as well, we'd go, this is such horseshit. I'm not in on this. I can't buy it. But you're just like, whatever. And then, good to them. When he's like, um, you just uh, do, 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 do your, do, do what you do, do, do your stuff. Do your stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and he just too. keeps going back. <laughs> like, and, yeah. And a credit to the movie for when Jeff Goldblum explains the plan and Will Smith says, I've seen them maneuver. I know how it works. You don't know how they work. You can't fly it. So when they say to each other, like, do you really think you can do all that? Do you really think you can do all that? And they say no. Like, they're both just guessing. Mm-hmm. Sure. They're both just hoping. Because you know what? What else are you going to do? If we don't try mm-hmm. this, we're all dead anyway. Right. And they have nothing else. Yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. If we we convince somebody of our plan. Want to do two of I? I think uh, sure. pretty much uh... Yeah, covered it right. What'd you say? Can, can I just point out one thing? On it? Nope. I was curious. Wait, nope, you can't. Jason, <laughs> nope. As, Shut up. No, it's fine. <laughs> as, as alien fans, yeah. And what did you think about the design of the aliens? Because I was happy that they just didn't look like every other movie alien. Um, I like. I loved like... how they looked. Yeah. I loved it. I loved mm-hmm. the outside and I loved the inside. I thought they looked awesome. And then, um, of course, I love the whole part where. Um, the the famous part where the alien has to wrap his little tentacle around mm-hmm. the guy and have the scientist talk, you know, and of course they made fun um, of that in another movie. What was that? They Roy? have a um, they had a toy Roy. at the time that I really wanted because this was so cool. That if you waved your hand in front, the 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 body would open up and the little alien was on the inside and oh, you heard, that's you heard cool. the. Roar. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, of was course it expensive? disappeared by the time I actually thought about getting it. Um, Go look uh, on eBay. Uh, they probably still have one. Yeah, it's probably like stupid mm-hmm. money. Mm-hmm. I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look that up. Um, but you know what? Like, like before we hit TMI, I just want to say uh, I really don't want to talk about part two. All I'm saying is um, it makes zero sense that Brent Spiner, that character, is still alive. I've mm-hmm. never seen it. Uh, I refuse bad. to yeah. watch it because I've, the, I've the guy who had the, the 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 scientist who had yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Pack, rap like was was alive mm. in part two mm. makes zero sense whatsoever uh, i must have so. seen it then because that sounds oh, familiar true. and it's i remember bad. thinking so, the same thing i just and maybe i just put it, had it out of my mind because it was stupid but I, I don't know i need everybody at home if, if you if you haven't seen it i want you to just pretend the sequel doesn't exist mm-hmm. and that's it it's terrible it'll make life easier it's terrible. It's time for TMI with Melanie. Listen, listen to this. I am in the bathroom right before the movie starts. Uh huh. And I'm in the stall, and there's no toilet paper. Yeah. And mine are at home TMI. in a display case above TMI, my bed. My yeah. TMI. TMI. TMI, my friends. TMI. Too much information. TMI, too much information. Say don't go there, but that's lame. Now here's Melanie with your timeless movie info. All right, Melanie, blow us away. Okay, I will uh, give you a forewarning here about the names you know I can never pronounce. So there's a few of those Sorry. in here. Okay, 
Um, the budget was $75 million and the box office was um, $817.4 million, and then 72 days of filming. Um, so they made a ton of money off of that, $817.4 million compared to $75. Um, it's pretty amazing that they took so long to put out a sequel with that a type mm. of gross, really. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Um, the advertising campaign cost $24 million. Uh, the airtime for the trailer shown during your Super Bowl commercial uh, cost $1.3 million. Um, it became the second highest grossing film of all time worldwide, second only to Jurassic Park in 93, and Jeff Goldblum was in both. So he's making some good money on those. Yep. Um, Dean Devlin and Roland em Emmerich wrote the script Emmerich. in less than, what was it? Emmerich. 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 Okay, remind me of that later. Yeah, it's like Rick. Okay. okay. Um, wrote the script in less than four weeks. It was sent out on Thursday, and they started getting offers the next day. By Monday, they were in pre-production, um, which is crazy that it came out that good. It seemed like it was kind of rushed with that. Um, according to producer and co-writer Dean Devlin, the U.S. military had agreed to support the film by allowing the crew uh, to film at the military bases, consulting the actors who have military roles, etc., However, after learning that Area 51 um, and their references uh, in the script, they withdrew their support. Um, <laughs> Whoopsie. A fishy. No, just <laughs> um, let's see. Filming at the Los Angeles International Airport was delayed several days due to the threat from the actual Unabomber. Oh. Um, the scene in which Will Smith drags the unconscious alien, which I thought was cute, um, across the desert uh, was filmed on the Salt Flats near Great Salt Lake in Utah. Um, his line, what the hell is that smell, was unscripted um, because it is home to tiny crustaceans. Um, Great Salt Lake is home to tiny crustaceans called brine shrimp. When they die, the bodies sink to the bottom of the lake, which is not very deep, and they decompose. When the wind kicks up just the right notch, the bottom mud is disturbed, and the smell of millions of decaying brine shrimp can be very, very bad. <laughs> nice. And so, apparently, nobody warned Will, so mm. that funny line was all on his own um this holds the record for most miniature model work to appear in one film the model shop supervisor michael joyce um estimated that they built more than twice as many miniatures for the production than ever have been built for any other film by creating miniatures for the building city streets aircraft landmarks and monuments the crew also built miniatures for several of the spaceships featured in the film, including a 30-foot destroyer model and a version of a mothership spanning 12 feet. Due to advances in digital technology since this film's release, most experts believe that this record will probably stand forever. Yeah. Um, let's see. The alien spacecraft in the Era 51 was full-scale model measuring 65 feet wide. Um, the White House, which exploded, was built at 1 12th uh, scale just to be blown up. Although it was also used in another shot when David and Julius stopped the car in front of the White House, um, nine cameras filmed the explosion at various speeds, one of which was 12 times faster than normal, um, then played back at normal speed to make the explosion seem larger and slower on film. Um, the White House interiors were originally built for the American president in 95. Um, and they were also used for Mars attacks, and, ah. which was 96. Um, and Nixon in 95. Um, to achieve the look of Houston, as seen from the air at night, the crew simply poked hole, holes in a sheet of black construction paper, placed the paper in front of a bright light in a smoke-filled room, <laughs> and photographed it using special lighting to accomplish that effect. That's the best. Movie magic. That's yes, <laughs> right. It doesn't need to be expensive. <laughs> All right. This is the name I'm going to have trouble with. Uh, production designer Patrick Tadopoulos. Palusis? How do you say his name? Tatopoulos. I think it's like Tatopoulos. Tatopoulos. Uh, presented Roland Emmerich with two concepts for the aliens. Emmerich liked both designs so much that he came up with the idea to use one design for the actual alien and the other to be a biomechanical suit that the aliens could wear. That's cool. So both the concepts appear in the film. Excellent. And this is another film where they uh, uh, use the KY jelly. 
uh, to make them look slimy. That sure. poor production assistant that has to go to the market and just buy like a whole carriage full of KY jelly. Yeah. Can you have, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> funny. I'm making I never a movie. thought of that. Wait, this no, was pre Amazon, no, too, the poor. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I'm making a movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah they know exactly. we're making a movie. And they were probably like, what kind of movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. The president's speech that was filmed on August 6, 1995. Um, was in front of an old airplane hangar that once housed the Enola Gay. Am I Enola saying that Gay. right? Enola Gay, yep. Enola Drop, Gay. Dropped the dropped atomic, atomic bomb, bomb yep, mm-hmm. on Hiroshima exactly 50 years earlier on August 6, 1945. Interestingly, uh, you know, amazingly enough, because you know, <laughs> <laughs> the crowd was not scripted to start cheering. Bill Pullman's delivery of the speech was so good that they just started applauding and cheering on their own. And the filmmakers loved it so much that they kept it in the movie. Um, I can see that. It's, it's a rousing speech. It is. It is. Good speech. <laughs> I thought it was very moving. You know, yeah. you, almost have, you, you almost have little tears in your eyes like, that's so good. But it um, also starts weak and ends strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. It starts very, with the feedback on right. the mic. That's true. It starts timid, but then grows mm-hmm. just like the yep. whole movie does. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the, the, and, and the score underneath just yep. makes it better. Yeah, it doesn't, yep, doesn't yeah. hurt. Uh, let's see. The main helicopter used during the welcome wagon operation had a test flight line with lights um, on before filming. Over 150 calls were received in Orange County from callers who spotted the helicopter and, in, unsure of what it was, reported it as a UFO sighting. I think that's so funny. Can I can I break for a moment when I say yeah. that this movie, uh, even though we saw all the trailers? The helicopter is trying to do the same gimmick as Close Encounters of the Third Kind when we communicated with the aliens in Close Mm -hmm. Encounters. It was music and lights at the last scene. But Mm -hmm. those aliens were friendly. And so this movie is setting you up saying, well, maybe they'll be friendly because they'll talk to us with lights. And the first thing they do is blow up the helicopter. Yeah, That is the best thing ever. Because we know it's going to get blown up, but it's still like, oh, maybe it'll be friendly, just like Close Encounters. Nope, not the Mm -hmm. same aliens, folks. Boom! Blows up immediately. <laughs> so, all right, yeah, continue. that's really Sorry. good. No, that's good. Uh, let's see here. Um, the line was supposed to be a uh, "fuck my lawyer," uh, said by Harvey uh, Firestein, was dubbed over with "forget" in the final cut to make the movie um, from getting an R rating. That's why it has a PG thirteen. Hmm. They didn't. They didn't want an R rating. One yeah. F bomb and two an R. Yep. Jada Pinkett Smith turned down the role of Jasmine. Because of scheduling conflicts with a nutty professor in 96, she would later marry Will Smith. Um, we all know how that went. Yep. Uh, sorry. <laughs> well, how did that go? I'm not sure. All right, go ahead. Struggling, right, to, yeah. struggling to write the score, David Arnold secluded himself in a Los Angeles hotel room for almost four months to avoid the escalating hype for the film. But from his window, he saw helicopters carrying banners with taglines to the film as part of a marketing campaign, which only stressed him out even more. Nope. Um, Let's see. I know. Bill Pullman used the memory of a decaying tooth, which was pulled from his mouth in order to come up with a terrified expression when speaking with the alien invaders. (laughs) I thought that was crazy. Oh, okay. (laughs) Wow. That's it. I got a a fun one, too, that I had read that. Which will put, I think, would give the film a completely different spin, especially that speech, is that the role of the president was originally written for Kevin Spacey. No! Oh. Oh. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, and the studio didn't think he was star material at the time, so they, they said no, and the role went to Bill Pullman. I'm glad it went to Bill Pullman anyway, even though despite, like, I know why people, you guys were saying that with Kevin Spacey, but Bill Pullman is just such a lovable character. Everybody just loves him. You know what I mean? But let's rewind and say that not long before this, he was Lone Star in Spaceballs. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So it just goes to show he can do whatever you ask him to do. Yeah. And he will do whatever you ask him to do. Yeah. He's good. Mm. He's I like very him. good. It's time now for final judgment are you ready to rubber stamp this bitch here's the final judgment all right well now it's time for final judgment which a lot of cities received in this uh, in this movie mm-hmm. um so uh, let's uh, let's go around the horn and uh, let's go with jason what do you think uh, how well does it hold up today i mean i think it uh what i loved about it in 1996 was that it was a uh, 
it felt like Hollywood decided to make a B movie, which a lot of times these alien UFO movies do. Uh, that's why I loved it then. That's why I loved it now. Does it hold up? I don't know. I think if the same exact movie was made the same exact way today, it would be a B movie because they can do this kind of technology now in a in a B movie budget. But for me, again, I, I think like we talked about the last time I was on, so much of these movies that came out of my past or tied to a moment in my life or a period of my existence. And for that, uh, this movie will always hold a 4th of July place for me because this is my Independence Day. Boom! Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> wow. Good for you. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, um, Did I'll you go, plan uh, that? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm anyway. gonna go. Uh, I, I'm not gonna be that guy, even though I kind of hinted at the beginning. Um, I do think it holds up. I think it holds up not for the same reason Jason does. I never thought of those takes. I just thought that it is just compact storytelling mm -hmm. that pulls you along the entire way. It doesn't matter if some of the effects aren't CGI or you can tell they're models or you can tell it's screen on screen. And that doesn't matter as long as it's been directed well, it's been written well, and the pacing's good. And all the pacing is perfect for this movie. Doesn't feel. We've watched some short movies that seem to take forever, and this movie's two hours. And I usually say in the IMDb, like, "Oh God, this movie two hours and twenty five minutes." It doesn't feel two hours and twenty five minutes. You're in it the whole way. You don't care, and that to me is the model of good storytelling. And storytelling transcends eras. And so to that, I would say, yeah, obviously, it holds up. All right, Melanie. I say definitely, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, they're they're still playing it every single year, multiple times a year, just not or just around Fourth of July. Um, I've showed it to my teenagers; they both liked it. They both still remember it. Um, you know, I know there's only two kids, but I mean, that's still. I mean, one of them has no attention span whatsoever. So <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> um, and the acting is great from everybody. The lines are great, um, and honestly. Sometimes I'd rather go back to the old-fashioned models to look at that because I honestly think that looks so much better than some of the uh, CGI sure. stuff now. Mm -hmm. yep. Like, remember when we were watching, what was that movie with Tom Hanks in it that we watched? And they were, like, kind of, like, flying up and down the buildings. What the hell was that movie? Are you um, talking about Tom Cruise? Yeah. Did I say Tom oh, Hanks? Tom Hanks. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm like, I need to see this movie with Tom Hanks flying down a building. We did a podcast about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I kept saying, I, it looks so stupid and generic. Like, it's just, sometimes the CGI is so out there, yeah. it does not look real at all. It just almost looks like a cartoon. Yep. So, mm -hmm. And they spend so much time meticulously building these models, and it takes them forever to look identical, and that sometimes looks better. So, yep. um, but yeah, I think it definitely holds up. I think if it was in the movies today, I think people would would enjoy watching it. So they re-release it, it at Alamo. I mean, you can go probably see it next mm -hmm. month. Really? At, at the Alamo, yeah. That's cool. They're showing Jaws um, next week. Just saying. I think it. I think it holds up uh, because um, today's uh, every, everybody like has like low attention spans, especially like, like the TikTok generation. Mm -hmm. And I, I I still think that this has enough pacing that it could draw anyone in mm -hmm. that you know what i mean like and the story is great so it's it's yeah. a lot of fun it'd be an easy like i would i would have an easy time sell you know showing this to people than maybe others that you know from the past but mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna make it uh, nice and simple yes yep. it does it it's looks my... good too you know the filming looks good yeah. so yep yeah, and it's right. my favorite movie with an abundance of KY jelly, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? I feel like I'm always saying that in the trivia, like they use KY jelly for whatever. It's like always. <laughs> like, you bought the heating KY jelly. You're supposed to get the original. <laughs> Christ. But that's yeah, funny that you never thought of somebody now. actually having to buy it, though. Like yep. you never thought of the person that actually has to buy pushing their carriage down the aisle with thirty tubes of it. <laughs> Imagine how many stores they had to Trying go to, to hold honestly. Them all. Trying to hold them all like 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 <laughs> their arms What's more up. embarrassing, buying thirty tubes or buying a thirty gallon drum? <laughs> I don't know. They're both pretty embarrassing. Both Probably pretty the individual funny. tubes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, well. Listen, um uh, well, that was our show, everybody. I'd like to thank uh, Jason uh Burns. Well well hey. 
it was a blast having you back, man. Thanks for having me back. Let everybody know how to find you and all that. You can uh, find me on the whataboutpodcast.com. Um, for all 80s fans, I assume this episode is going to be up in time for 4th of July. Uh, so we're we're featuring more. Bronson Pincho from, uh, you know, Balky Bartakamus because of the new uh, Beverly Hills Axel Foley movie. Uh, and then we're having Art Alexakis, the uh, lead singer of Everclear, who's on talking with us Excellent. about sobriety. So Excellent. A couple of good nice. episodes coming up. Excellent. Awesome. Well, on, uh, I'd like to also thank uh, Steve Lavoie for our vocal imaging and Draco and the Malfoys for our theme music. Um, sorry it's been so long, folks. We have all been through uh, kind of an ordeal. I, I had COVID for two weeks, so so that was, uh, and I could not edit <laughs> during that time. I, so I was like, I called yeah. Jason the other day, and he sounded kind yeah. of like this. <laughs> what did I, sound, I felt huh? terrible when I called. Him. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I felt fucking terrible. It was uh, yeah, man. It's so, all like, oh, uh, like, doing oh. our best to, to get back on onto the, a little bit of a better schedule. So, um, uh, well, have a great week, folks. And um, I, like I said, we'll try to get this out uh, before Fourth of July. And um, until next time, movies may not age like fine wine, but we drink it anyway. Bye. <laughs>